Jalen is knocking them out on the road, and the media is tying itself in knots of rage and media bias. By the way, Oprah got her biggest audience ratings in two years with her Sarah Palin interview. Hi, Oprah. Go, Oprah. Uh, just a reminder, uh, Newsweek put uh, Sarah Palin on the cover using that runner's world photograph of her in her little running outfit with the American flag. And the headline was, what do you do about a problem like Sarah Palin? Now, <laughs> Elector. If that, was, if that doesn't tip the media's hand, I really don't know what uh, does. Uh, Andrew Sullivan, who you probably haven't heard of, but he's a big deal in the uh, in the Washington, Boston, New York uh, media corridor, uh, describes Palin as a delusional fantasist and a deeply disturbed person. On the Huffington Post yesterday, the site's most popular story was, quote, the 18 biggest falsehoods in Palin's book, which included over 3,700 reader comments. Well, there was I, so much anticipation. Th- I don't really need to go on to prove this, but you got to hear Judy Woodruff and David Frum. Palin defenders say the media continues its unfair treatment of her in this week's Newsweek, where she's pictured on the cover in running shorts. Palin called it sexist on her Facebook page. But conservative David Frum says she has brought it on herself. This is a woman who has got into a position of leadership um, by sending very powerful sexual signals. And we see that in the way that men like her much more than women do. What? 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 Powerful sexual signals and men like her more than women do? The crowd is packed with women. You know, I like David Frum. He's... But he's off the reservation on this. I mean, he just, it's, you know, and he's joined the other team in order to slap her around. Listen to MSNBC's Lawrence O'Donnell. I'll just remind you, Lawrence O'Donnell is not a journalist. He's a political partisan. He he worked on Capitol Hill with uh, uh, left-wing senators and congressmen for years. Uh, He's got absolutely no journalism training. Uh, He wrote West Wing episodes for a while. He's a hack. Well, he, he's a he's a, a political hack, yes. And he was interviewing the statistics genius Nate Silver. Tell us now what the odds are that Palin will run in 2012. Well, she's doing everything that a candidate would ordinarily do if they wanted to run for president four years from now, where she's, you know, she has a book out, she's visiting swing states, she's endorsing candidates, she has a pack. I mean, I would say probably about 70% if I had to, to lay money in Vegas on it. 70% chance she runs for president. Come on! Baby needs a new pair of shoes. And remember what arch lefty Janine Garofalo thinks about you people who marched against Obama's socialism. She reflects what most people in New York, Los Angeles, Boston, and San Francisco think about you. Which, let's let's be very honest about what this is about. Mm -hmm. It's not about bashing Democrats. It's not about taxes. They have no idea what the Boston Tea Party was about. They don't know their history at all. This is about hating a black man in the White mm. House. This is racism straight up. That is nothing but a bunch of tea-banging rednecks. Mm. And, they, and, they, and there is no way around that. And you know, you can tell these type of right-wingers anything oh. and they'll believe it mm-hmm. except the truth. Oh, okay. You can tell these uh, right-wingers uh, they're, they're uh, white and they're racists. Bunch of rubes. They hate her because they hate you, Mr. and Mrs. and Ms. Middle America. They can't stand you. And uh, the way they operate is to sucker you into voting for one of their elitists every four years and then dump all over you. The limbic brain inside a right winger or Republican or conservative or or your average white power activist, the limbic brain is much larger in their in their headspace than in a reasonable person. And it's pushing against the frontal lobe. So their synapses are misfiring. Is Bernie Goldberg listening? Russ. Yeah, because Bernie might not have heard this when I said this the first time. <laughs> so, Bernie, this is for you. It is a, it is a neurological problem that we're dealing with. <laughs> she uh, constantly uh, makes a judgment about people who uh, march in Tea Party days, Tea Party activists, or make any other political statement against the President of the United States. That they are racist. They look like a white crowd to me, but it is pretty uh, <laughs> monochromatic up yeah. there. You're just they're, a they're, racist ass clapper. That's all you are. See what I mean? I get that because I dare talk about race, and I'm white. John, what's up? You pasty cornball. And those, these are not isolated calls. I mean, this has been going on never uh, quite ending. a while. 
Personally, I think you're a racist, John. You're the only albino I know who's playing the race card. John, you just a bigot. You just don't know no better. John, you are coming across as such a typical white Republican racist. It ain't gonna be no more. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. White Man. Oh, hey, y'all y- 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 wants to go back where you had the the the, 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 the yellow back black people in the house and the, and the ones that stood up to the ground outside. You are clearly a racist. No. And one of these days, somebody's gonna sock you right in your big fat mouth. <coughs> and you're not. And I'm not. Not even a little bit. But it is pretty uh, <laughs> monochromatic up there. Untwisting the pretzel logic of American politics. Politics does terrible things to good people. John, John Gibson. Gibson.